Hey, Peter Beatty here. So in this video, I'm just going to give you a rundown of my video production process. Basically, um, the the different steps of uh, that I go through to create a video, a sales video like the one that you see on Video Ad Rivals sales page. You can see this at videorevolver.com forward slash rival. It's up there in the address bar. If you want to see this video in action, uh, but recently I posted, um, I made a post in the in the Video Revolver Facebook group, asking you guys what you wanted me to do a free training video on, and it was kind of fifty fifty mix between people confused with or not sure how they should use their new video making skills or their new video making software tools and templates, uh, how they could use those tools in their business to make money, and then the other half. Uh, were people who uh, wanted to wanted to see the inside look or behind the scenes look at my video production process. So for those remaining 50% of you who want to see my video production process, that is what I intend to show you in this video. Uh, I made a separate video for those of you who are still kind of newbies and are curious on ways you can use video in your business. So check out that other video if you're a kind of a newbie. Uh, but anyways, let's get into it. So this is Video Ad Rival. I told you where you can see this video in my pop-up box. It keeps popping up there. Sorry about that. So this video is about 15 minutes long. I'm not sure exactly how long it is. I have the play bar hidden there for conversions. Uh, but it's around 15 minutes long, I'd say. And this video, the typical sales video like this, takes uh, typically, let's, let's actually let's play it while we watch it here, 14 minutes long. So a video like this typically takes me uh, honestly about a week to create. Um, so that includes writing the script, uh, visualizing the video in my head, uh, making the storyboard, basically where I pick out all the visual parts of the video, and then making the visuals, the visuals for the video, that you're, the stuff that you see, shooting my voiceover, and then bringing it all together in, into uh, into a video, basically. So I'm going to show you how I do all that in this video. So a video like this all starts with, of course, a product um, to sell or a service to sell, whatever. You obviously need to have something to sell. So you kind of have a general idea of what your sales message is going to be. And once you know that and you know who your ideal audience is, you know... Um, you know, you know how to sell your product, basically. Then it's going to make this process uh, really easy. So what I do, I know what my product is. Obviously, I know what its purpose is. I know who my target audience is, and I know how to speak directly to them in a way that would um, basically uh, make them see the value in my product and want to buy it. Right. So it all starts with writing a video, a script for my video. And basically, all I do is I just open up a notepad document. And I don't even use Microsoft Word. I just use a notepad document. And then I just start typing away. I don't worry about spelling or anything like that. I just start typing away. And um, then I go ahead and I clean it up and I put it inside Microsoft Word. Right? I correct all the spelling, add paragraphs, make it look nice and pretty. Uh, and then from there, what I do, I have the video script done, right? And then at this point, I may have some ideas throughout the script uh, and different areas of the script. I may have some ideas as to what I want to use for visuals. Like as I'm saying this sentence here, I may want to show a, a picture of a cat or I may want to show a, a stock video clip of a rocket ship taken off, you know, that kind of thing. So I may have some ideas already. I may not. So then I move on to the next step. So I have the script. And then I move on to the storyboarding step. Now the storyboarding step is where I basically take the script and then I split it up and I define all the visuals that are going to go with the written script. So basically what I do, some people actually use storyboarding software or they do it with a paper, piece of paper and a pen and they actually draw pictures like stick figures of what they want to appear on the screen as like a particular sentence is being spoken. What I like to do, it's a lot quicker, is I go through the script and I, and I say, okay, this sentence right here. Hey, it's Peter Beatty from VideoRevolver.com, and I'd like you to grab a pen and take notes because. And then what I do is I say, okay, what do I want to show on the screen as I'm saying that sentence? 
And then, well, I think, well, I'm talking about myself. It's kind of an introduction of myself. So maybe I should show a picture of myself. So I put a little note there. Drop in a picture of me or a video clip of me. Okay, done. The next sentence. In the next few minutes of this video, you're about to discover. At this point in the video, I say, okay, what do I want to show here? Well, in this case, I think I'll show the words on the screen. You can see I have it right there. Uh, it says word for word, so that tells me I want to show these words on the screen with PowerPoint slides, and that's exactly what I've done here in the video. If you were to watch the video, it starts out saying, uh, hey, it's Peter Beattie from VideoRevolver.com, and there's a video of me talking, or there's a clip of me talking. I'll rewind it. Let me find the actual beginning of the video after the intro. It says, hey, it's Peter Beattie from VideoRevolver.com. I'd like to grab a pen, take notes, because in the next few minutes, you are about to discover, and you can see the words you're about to discover come on the screen, right? And then I just continue that. How to easily model, duplicate, and profit. What do I want to show when speaking these words? Well, I want to show word for word and have the words stack on each other. Let's see what I did. How to easily model, duplicate, and profit. Right? And then the script continues on. From one of the hottest video marketing trends online right now. And when I got to this sentence, I was like, okay, so what do I want to show here? Well, I can't just keep using words. It would get boring for the viewer, right? So I try to mix it up between... PowerPoint slides with text on the screen, still images, video clips, B-roll video clips, things like that. So I'm always trying to mix it up throughout the video. So I just did two, two slides of text, right? Or two sentences with text. So now I think, all right, I want to show something a little bit different. So maybe I should show a B-roll video clip, something that kind of represents something powerful because we're talking about one of the hottest video marketing trends online right now this kind of represents something. It represents a powerful video marketing trend. So maybe I should show something that represents the feeling uh, or represents something powerful. So I decided to show a rocket ship taking off, right? Blasting off. Okay. Um, and then I just continue to <clears throat> continue to go through the script like that. And I just kind of visualize what I want to show on the screen as I'm going through the script. And I'll make little notes here. Now you can do it visually like I said, you can make a visual um, storyboard. I prefer to do it just in plain text because it's so much faster instead of drawing everything on the screen. Like I could draw a rocket ship here. I could draw these words on the screen. I could draw a picture of me talking here, but I just do text to tell myself what I want to put there. And like I said, I just go through the script like that and I visualize what I want to show on the screen and then I make sure to, be, to keep alternating and mixing things up so I'm not just showing images. I'm not just showing text. I'm not just showing you know, video clips of rocket ships taking off or anything like that, I mix it up and keep it interesting for the viewer. That's probably one of the most important things that I'd like you to take away from this video is that you want to keep mixing things up. You want it to be interesting for your viewer. You can even see in some parts of this script, we get to an area where I start to demonstrate something, right? I say, so, if we visit any of the top news and content sites online, such as CNN.com, and click on a popular article with a video, you can see that before we can watch this video, a video ad plays. So what I could do is I could just display text slides on the screen, kind of describing this sentence, right? But what makes the most sense to me was to go to CNN.com, use Camtasia to record the screen, and actually show what I'm talking about here. So you can see in that part of the video, I'll see if I can skip ahead a little bit, Right about here is where I start talking about that sentence I just showed you. I'm talking about going to CNN.com, finding an article with a video on it, clicking the article, and before we can watch the video, a video ad plays. And then I go into explaining what a pre-roll video ad is and all that stuff. So this was actually done with Camtasia. I actually went to CNN's website and recorded me, you know, clicking through their pages and watching videos on their websites. And I was able to use that in this video. Um, let's see, so some areas I do screencast videos like that, if it's something I can demonstrate. Some areas just are better with text slides. Some areas are better with just B-roll stock video clips, right? Um, however, there in this particular script, I decided to mix it up a little bit with cartoon characters. So we get to a part down here where I say, 
and when the viewer who is already engaged with their site by watching a video clicks one of these videos at CNN.com or CNN.com gets paid. So what I could do here, I just I figured, well, I could I want to kind of explain something visually to make the viewer understand what I'm talking about. I could do it with text, but it would be probably be a little bit boring and confusing. I could probably do it with stock video clips, but you know, I kind of wanted to actually show someone on a computer clicking and doing what I, I was talking about. So I decided to use video maker effects and some of their cartoon characters to build a scene of someone at a computer clicking around and then a cartoon character getting paid by having some dollar signs drop down on them. So let's see if I can scroll ahead to that part of the video right here. You can see where the visitor is on their computer clicking a video ad and then the website owner gets paid. So that kind of represents that sentence there. And again, these are just pre-designed uh, scenes inside video maker effects that you most likely already have access to if you have that software uh, if not pick it up at videorevolver.com forward slash uh, vmfx or slash video maker effects I can't remember what my link is but uh, these scenes are already inside there uh, you, you know I didn't make these characters or anything like that they're already inside the software and I just make my way through the through the script doing exactly that over and over again and this process probably takes me about an hour or two to visually map out the video, basically. And this step right here, sadly, a lot of people skip. And then in the end, they wonder why their video is confusing to watch, or they wonder why their video doesn't get the results that they hoped it would get them in their business. And it's because it comes down to a lack of planning. They don't actually break down their video and think, all right, at this part of the video, what am I going to show here? At this part of the video, what do I want the viewer to see? What emotion or what mood, what feelings am I trying to invoke in my viewer's mind? So what should I actually show to them? And people just jump right into, you know, they write the script and they just jump into making the video. They just wing it, basically. They open up their video maker and they wing it in their videos show, okay? So don't skip this step. This is the storyboarding step so we're starting from step one which is having the idea of what you want to say about your product step two is writing the script step three is breaking it down into a an outline like this or a storyboard if you want to do it the visual way with characters and stuff like that now from here what we do um, I will actually record the script into my microphone like I'm doing now I'll save that as an mp3 file and then I will just open up Sony Vegas this is the actual Sony Vegas project file for that sales video that we're talking about here. So what I do first is I import my voiceover that I just recorded and then I actually uh, start bringing in the pieces, the visuals of the video that I kind of made notes of here. Actually I'm getting ahead of myself. The next step after this is I actually create the visuals. So I go onto stock video clip sites like videohive.net and if I'm telling myself I want a stock video clip of a powerful figure I'll go to, to videohive.net, I'll find a stock video clip of a powerful figure, I'll buy it right for later. Uh, when I get to a uh, part of the script where I'm going to have text slides, I actually go into PowerPoint and I make those text slides. You can see here, I just make them with text and add animations to them. And you know, I just make all the visuals that are needed for the video. I get all the visuals created, and what I do in PowerPoint is I actually publish this to a video. So I get a video file with all the PowerPoint slide animations. I bring in all the stock video clips that I buy at videohive.net. I bring in everything, all the visuals that I've outlined and told myself that I need to create for the video based on this outline here. I bring them into to Vegas. And then from there, it's just a matter of fact of, uh, or it's just the fact of bringing in the voiceover that I recorded of my voice and then lining up the visuals with the voiceover manually. It's you know, it's just one of those processes that you can't really, it's something you can't really skip or make easy. Um, it's easy, it's just time consuming. So what you do is, you know, you just have to physically listen to your voiceover and then line up everything to where it's perfect. So let's see what this looks like. Hey, it's Peter Beatty from VideoRevolver.com here. And I'd like you to grab a pen, sit back and take notes because in the next few minutes of this video, now you can see, I just said right there, in the next few minutes of this video, now what I'm going to say next is, you are about to discover. So at that point, 
I need to make sure that I have that slide perfectly lined up with me saying you are about to discover right and then I start to talk about how to model duplicate and profit so I want to make sure that those slides also line up with those sentences and if I have to I move things around on the timeline so that it is perfect because you want your viewer to be watching your video listening to your voice and the visuals should line up with your voice perfectly there should be no lag and your, your viewer should not notice that something is off sync basically so let's see what that looks like you're going to discover how to easily model duplicate and profit now you can see those three slides right there or four slides are synced up with the words I'm saying look duplicate duplicate now and profit and profit you can see the slides match up perfectly and it's just a matter of moving everything on the timeline for example if this part of this the audio track right here is where I talk about you're about to discover and it ends up down here well I need to actually move this down here so it's perfect right oops I'm moving the audio track with it. I don't want to do that um, so I just move it down line it up line it up all manually all right that's just that's the process that I do and I do that throughout the entire length of the video and uh, yeah that's basically what I do to do my videos um, the final step after that is picking the audio tracks if you ever watch any of my sales videos you'll you will always notice the audio tracks and I I feel that audio or music background music whatever you want to call it is a big part a very important part of a sales video because um, it's really good for helping create a specific mood in your viewers brain helping them feel the feelings you want them to feel uh, if you want them to buy your product so if you go ahead and watch this video any video of mine you'll notice how the background music changes throughout the mood of the video if I want the viewer to be sad I will play sad music if I want them to feel intrigue or or curiosity or something like that I will sh I will play a background track associated with that feeling um, and all I do to find those audio tracks is I go on to uh, video hive or not video hive audio jungle dot now this is video uh, audio jungle dot net uh, there's obviously other sites out there where you can get stock uh, music files or stock music for your videos I've had the best luck here I always find their quality uh, is much higher than other sites so what I do if I want to find an audio track to represent sadness let's say sadness mood then I will go here and I will type that keyword and I will search I will take a listen to some different tracks I find one that I like I'll put it in my shopping cart buy it and use it in my video and that's basically it that's my secret um, production process really I mean there's really not much more to it than that other than actually going out there and doing it and taking the time to put it all together you can see there are a lot of edits in this video and it does take some time but in the end it's worth it because this is the one thing that is going to be doing all the heavy lifting uh, and actually generating sales for your product so do not skimp on your sales videos so I hope this video helped you you know in some way I hope it helped you see how I do my videos my production process how I bring everything together obviously um, you know it's kind of impossible for me to show you how I go through this step by step beginning to end because it's such a long process it really does take me about a week beginning to end to do this um, so I guess you know I probably could do like a live training in the future if you were interested in it but again it would have to be it would have to be spread out over multiple days because uh, it you know this is a process so hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, if you have any questions at all feel free to reply to the email and I'll help you out